Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to talk about how you can open a new frame whenever you click on a component like a button. We will need two frames here. We have a first frame and then when you click on a certain button on the first frame, it will open the second frame. So that's what we're going to do in this particular video. So in this example that we will take in the video, we will need three classes. The first class, which will contain the main method, and I'm going to create the first frame here. Okay, this line of code is used to create the first frame. And I will also have a second class that I have called here my frame. And this class is extending the J frame. So this is going to be used to create the first frame. So we will add a button and implement some action listener. So let me implement the action listener here. So say implement action listener, because we need that to make sure that when we click on the button, it's going to listen to the event and then do something that will be to open another frame. So we have to implement the method, the action performed method here. So I will simply click on add on implemented methods. Now we have our method here. So we also need a third class and I have called this class second frame. Okay, we were going to write the code for the second frame in here. But let's come back to our first frame. So for this particular first frame, we are going to declare some frame components. So we will say J label. We simply want to add a label and a button. So we will say uh, assignment operator new J label. And we will set the text of this label here. Click the button to open the second frame something like that we need to import the j label class and after the j label we need to add a button we say j button btn assignment operator we say j button and then we can set the text of the button open we need to import the j button class as well all right now in the constructor we are going to determine the positioning of our label and that of the button so we will say label that set bound and now we have to determine the x-axis so i will say 50 50 and 25 25 like this we can also add the button we say button set bound 100 100 100 100 for the dimensions so what we can do here is that we will add this particular component to our frame. So this uh, that add, we say label, and then this that add btn for the button. So we also need to set layout of this particular frame to null because we are adding the components manually. So we say null here. This that set layout null. So let's see what is happening when I click. So here we have a frame and we have a button and then we also have a label. We need to fix the positioning of these particular components. So as for the button, we will actually increase this to say 200 for X. Now let's run. Uh, we can say 300 and then reduce the height of the button to 50 okay we can also reduce the height of the label to something like that all right so now as you can see we are having our label which is saying click the button to open the second frame and then we have our button that says open so as for the button we can also say that uh button set focusable to false all right so now our button is appearing normally all right so now what we're gonna do is that in our second frame class we're gonna make sure that it's going to inherit from the j frame class so we say extends j frame like this we need to import the j frame class and then we are going to create a constructor so we say public second underscore frame let us open the curly braces public must be lowercase p okay that's okay so now we are going to add a simple label 
So we will say J label, and I'm gonna use this label to simply describe this particular frame. So I will set the text to, this is the second frame. So let me import the J label class. Okay, I will simply copy the code here and paste it in a second frame because I, I will just have uh, the very same properties. So now this, the layout is null, and then we have the title. Uh, here I can say second frame. I can uh, maybe just change the size for this particular frame here. Now I can also add the set visible, this set visible to true, and then I will add my label. So I was first position the label on the frame. So I will say label that set bounds uh, 100, 100, 250, 250. So this is gonna position the label on the frame. So we are having our second frame. So let's now work on the action event because for now, when we click on run, only the first frame will show. When you click on the button, nothing happens. So we will add an action event to this particular button so that when we click on it, we're supposed to see a second frame show up. So one way to do that is that we will come here in our action performed method. We will simply add an if statement and uh, that if statement is gonna do this. So it's gonna get the source of the event and then produce an action. So we will say if the source of the event is the button, we want you to open another frame, all right? So I will simply change the argument here. I will say EVT for event. So I will say if event source is equal to BTN because BTN is our button component. Now in the body of our if statement, I need to open the brackets here, all right? So in a body, we will simply say, we called our second frame. Uh, so our second frame is gonna be an object of the second frame class, okay? So we simply say second underscore frame. We call this second frame. Assignment operator, new second underscore frame. Still, if we run, nothing will happen whenever you click on the button. Why? Because we have not added the action listener to our button component. So even though we have written this code in the action performed, we have to make sure that the button is actually listening to the event happening. So how do you add a, an action listener to the button? You simply write the name of the button, which is BTN, and then say add action listener and then we'll pass in this because that's the class that is implementing the interface action listener so now when you run when you click on open now you can see the second frame that is showing we are having two frames showing on our screen uh, you could notice that on the second frame the label was not showing because we didn't add the label to our second frame. So we will simply say this, that add label in our second frame class. That's it. So now when we run, when we click on open, now you can see this is the second frame. So if you want to see the difference, uh, you want a difference to actually be more clear to you, we can actually maybe change the background color of the frame by saying that this that set background and then we say color that blue let's import the color class uh, let me run and see if this will work so let's set this that set opaque say true so this will not work uh, we need to add another method in between this. So we'll say this that get content pane that set background. Uh, now let's see if we run, let's click. Okay, now we are having our second frame, which is having a background color of blue. So we can also work on the label showing on this second frame. We will say label that set foreground. We'll set the color of the text to white. And that's it. 
we can also work on the font. So we say set font, new font. Let me say console us font that bold and then the size of the font we say 18. We need to import the font class. So let's import that. So now when we run and then click on open, you can see we are having our second frame having a black background color of blue and then the text of white. Let's just try to change the font size here to 28. Now click on open. Now you can see the font has increased 20. Okay, you can now see the font. Simply reduce this to 50, say 300 for the width. Now you can see this is the second frame. So one thing you can notice here is that both our frames are showing on the screen. You have the first frame on the right, you have the second frame with the background color of blue, okay? So what if we want to make sure that when we click on the button, the second frame will show, and then automatically the first frame will close itself. So this is what we need to do. Let's come back to our first frame where we actually wrote the code for making sure that the button listens to the event and then opens the second frame. We will add a line of code that will tell our application that, look, when you open the second frame, the first frame needs to close. We can't have both frames opened at the same time. All right, so that's what we are gonna do. So this is what we need to write. We will say this, that, we use a method called dispose and then semicolon. So this here is making reference to the class. And since you know that the class is actually implementing the JFrame uh, Java class, so this particular class would create object of type frame, right? So we'll be saying this frame created based on this class needs to dispose itself when we open the second frame. So these two lines of code, that's what they mean. So that now when you run your code, when you click on the button, open, now you see only the second frame showing and the first frame has been disposed, has closed itself, all right? So that's, that was it on how you could create uh, this small uh, Java program where you click on the button, opens another frame, okay? So I have showed you how you can open a second frame by clicking on a GUI component. So I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share, to comment, and to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in another video.